Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of I Do Everyday Automation. Today we'll start our conversation on networking, and more importantly, we will talk about a firmware that AT&T has recently issued that has broken IP pass-through and port forwarding for most of its users. I'll also talk about two solutions that I found on the internet that you guys can start using today to restore those functions. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so to start this project, you'll need something behind the residential gateway that's provided by AT&T. So anything like your run-of-the-mill Wi-Fi router with Ethernet ports built into it or even a managed switch that can provide some DHCP and routing to other devices will work fine. For my project, I chose the Ubiquiti USG security gateway. So I'm going to do a quick install here just to show some of you guys just in case you go that route. How the install goes and we'll do an in-depth video later so I'm downloading the software for it which is the unify software and we'll run through this real quick looks like I need a Java update so we'll go ahead and update that and the method we'll be doing in this video is the IP pass-through method I have the Aris router which is the uh, 210 model some of you guys may have some of the other models provided by AT&T so just be mindful of the instructions on how to do the IP pass through or DMZ pass through for your device in case you don't have the uh, Aris device that I'm using so we're gonna go ahead and get the unified controller started here The Unify Control is software based, but you can buy a physical device that has the software preloaded to it that has an Ethernet jack and plugs directly into the network. Uh, the Unify Control software version is free, and if you have a spare device like I do, I ha actually have a server running Windows 12, uh, 2012 that we'll be putting this on, uh, you, you can save yourself about 70 bucks instead of buying the controller. All right, so we'll go into the AT&T software here. I have a little notepad with all my passwords and everything uh, saved. That's a good idea for you guys if you, uh, as you're going through the video, if you're going to need sensitive information. So I can just copy and paste my passwords and other information like that real quick. We're going to go into the IP pass through portion of the RS menu. We're going to turn on pass through mode. And then you're going to need. To go with the DHCP fixed and you're going to need your MAC address for whatever device you're going to pass the public IP to. So we're going to go ahead and launch the Unify controller so that I can get the MAC address for the security gateway. Alright, here's my MAC address. I actually have it blocked out for security purposes, obviously, so we're just going to copy this. And we're going to paste it here. And then from there, you're just going to select save. All right, now that those changes have been applied, we can go back to our Unify Security Gateway and finish the setup. So we're going to skip the configure Wi-Fi portion. I'll cover that in a later video. Here you're going to fill out your information for access to the controller. The basic username and password you want to use. Uh, obviously, we'll apply that here. And again, I'm just going to block out my personal information. I know it's a little bit of overkill because I'm going to change most of this after the video is done anyway <laughs> for added security. All right, and you don't have to do the cloud login credentials. Uh, if you're doing the security gateway, you can skip this. But if you already have a cloud login uh, configuration with Unify, you can enter it here. 
You're just going to confirm that information. And we're going to put in that login information we just created. All right, and from here, we're actually logged into the gateway software. So this is basically the interface for the, uh, this is the controller, which is the, the, uh, the interface for the gateway. There's actually a couple of things here later we'll probably explore a little more in depth. Like some of these uh, icons here on the side. But for now, we'll go ahead and continue with the process. As you can see, the gateway still provisioning. And as our little three icons in this menu start to light up, we'll know that, uh, well, two of the three start to light up, we'll know we're getting connectivity back through the, uh, through the RS uh, residential gateway. And we'll just take a look around real quick just to show you guys a few of the features. I always did like the Unify uh, product line. They do have a lot of control and a lot of uh, functions that you can you can monitor your network and get a good visibility as to how things are operating and where everything's going. The user interface is fairly intuitive if you've been around, you know, other uh, devices here and there. Uh, okay, so we can see the uh, gateway just got connected. However, we still don't have any uh, connectivity through the internet. It's probably still grabbing you know the the DHCP configuration from the router so it'll be a bit longer so in the meantime we'll continue the little quick tour here and again like I said if you guys have a different uh, device the configuration will probably be different uh, for your routing device that you're gonna have behind the residential gateway so just consult uh, you know any of the instruction manuals anything you have for those devices let's go ahead and go into settings real quick and from here obviously you can see the uh, you know the general settings uh, the site settings the wireless network uh, you, know, you can do your backups if you want to back up the configuration before you do any any make any changes but for now, we'll go into networks. You can see our LAN network and our WAN network is uh, is set to use DHCP, but we want to use our own DNS servers. So we'll go back to our notepad here and we'll grab the DNS information. Uh, this is one thing I like about the Unify Gateway, uh, especially using it in IP pass through mode and in the more advanced uh, router pass through. I'll show you guys in the next video. You can actually use your own DNS servers so you don't have to go through AT&T's. Uh, one of the big things, a lot of people, the reason a lot of people like to go this route is because you can use uh, DNS servers like Google's or you can use, uh, you know, the 1.1.1.1, which a lot of people say is a good bit faster instead of going with the ISP uh, DNS servers. So we're just going to plug those in, hit save here. All right, now we're going to go into the... Uh, I'm sorry not the static route we're gonna go into the uh, port forwarding here so we can uh, reconfigure our ports to uh, retain access to our remote desktop and our um, and our blue iris server for our cameras which we lost as part of that firmware upgrade so while we're plugging this information in again I'm gonna consult my uh, a notepad here uh, but while we're plugging this information in it's just strange to me that AT&T would push out a firmware you know it's been almost two months now and there's there still has been there's been no rollback or no planned announcement for any type of fix for this uh, luckily this only affected me a little over a week ago but I was out of town obviously when it affected me so that you know that was a pretty big strain you know I had to use a um, Chrome remote desktop in the meantime just to monitor and access things 
and it you know it was, it was pretty much a headache and it's just frustrating when when you know companies do things like this and they're not really concerned about the the effect they may have on a majority of their users who like to have these features so we'll go ahead and put the forward IP address and forward port in here of where we want the um, the external ports to forward here and you can see I've already done the blue hours and the remote desktop I mean it's pretty straightforward you put in the, the port the external port and you put in the IP and the internal port hey look at that now we can see our networks up since we have uh, black um, indicators here showing the latency this uh, MP uh, the, the megabits per second throughput I don't understand why it, it never shows accurately if you're on a speed test it'll show you your accurate speeds so I'm still doing a little tinkering with that to figure that out but in the meantime let's make sure our port forwarding is working so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my uh, my external DNS that I have routing back to the server this is actually my laptop I switched over on you guys real quick and let's see if we get the uh, the uh, login menu Oh, here we go we have the login menu for the blue iris server so we'll go ahead and plug in our credentials here and see if we can get connected all right I'm making progress here it looks like we have the UI 3 blue iris screen that's popping up and you can see the home page is starting to load and the fact that we can make this connection from the external uh, DNS page I think we're good to go okay everybody I hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you can stay tuned for this series as we progress from the intermediate solution to a more advanced solution on how you guys can bypass the AT&T modem we have here and go straight through the ubiquity USG See you guys on the next one.